Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'd like you to just lift your hands as a family of faith. I'd like us to thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Thank him for the miracles. Thank him for the signs, the wonders. Thank him for the manifestations of his hand in our midst. Please bless him. World over, Azaria family following, give him praise. We choose to say thank you. We choose to say you have done all things well. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done. Sing it from your heart to him. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have. Father, we see your mighty hand in our midst, week in, week out. Our lives are full of testimonies of your goodness, healings, deliverances, liftings. These are the Lord's doing, and we have come to say thank you. We are not ungrateful. We return like the one leper to say thank you, Jesus. We're not confused as to who is the doer, the mighty things that you do in our midst. Men may focus their attention on us, but we redirect them to Jesus, the doer, the worker of wonders. Thank you, Father. Forever we declare that this place remains a house that projects Jesus. It is true that we are the vessels that you use, but beyond us may men see you. In the name of Jesus Christ, beyond us may men see your power. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands Your majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Hallelujah There are five things that will always happen for as long as we live serving the purposes of God in and through this platform. Number one, every time we gather there must be encounters. An encounter is an experience that makes God and his principles real in your life. 
encounters. Number two, there must be transformation. The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Number three, we must give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to reveal the love and the power of Jesus through signs, wonders, and miracles. Let me tell you, I believe in miracles. I really believe in miracles. Number four, there must be impartations of all sorts. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Men can carry graces. And our possibilities in this kingdom are defined by the kinds and the levels of graces that we carry. Thou anointest my head with oil and I see the proof of what is on my head by looking at my cup. It doesn't anoint my cup. If something is wrong with my cup, the problem is not the cup. The problem is what is on my head. And then finally, we must always provide an opportunity for fellowship. How good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, his garment. He says, there the Lord hath commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a few minutes and we'll be seated. But while I sat back there, I think it was David who was ministering. I, the Lord was showing me a vision. And in that vision, I saw someone with what looks like um, a cleaner. You know, when you write on a board and you're cleaning. That's what I saw happening. Just cleaning. And the scripture that came to me is blotting out every handwriting. And every ordinance that spoke against us. And I'm just going to raise one song. We'll be seated shortly, but I want you to bring all those under the anointing. There are families. This is not just individuals. Individuals may be under the anointing, but this is a ministration for families. There are handwritings that have followed people for many years. You may not even know. Handwritings that authorize favor to leave you. Handwritings that authorize good things to leave you. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. One more time. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Your healing rain is falling down healing rain is falling down in the main auditorium all the overflows down to the basement and outside our Zaria family following our global family following I stretch my hands and I decree and declare everyone who belongs to this category where there are handwritings please bring them out and ordinances that will not let you go this is koinonia and in the name of jesus the christ of god exalted both as lord and king i declare that those handwritings are blotted out now those handwritings are blotted out now everywhere whoever has been a victim of demonic writings kataparuskiata writings on females writings on males writings on educated ones uneducated ones writings that wait for seasons to be activated in the name of jesus christ i declare right now may those writings be blotted out writings against your finances writings against your health writings against your victory writings against your lifting in the name that is above all names this night this night not tomorrow not next week not monday this night open your mouth begin to declare i blot out by the power of the blood every handwriting help them every handwriting Shilakata paruka tosiata. 
lift your voice and pray there is power in the name of jesus there are miracles in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus it breaks every chain it removes every chain yeah. it breaks every chain please don't be distracted you are in church we are praying god is settling serious issues here we came to receive i'm still praying god is not done yet listen to me listen there are families there is a limit on you nobody rises beyond that limit it doesn't matter whether you travel abroad it doesn't matter whether you back a phd it doesn't matter there seems to be a limit right now in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus in the main auditorium down to the basement outside following from any nation as you shout that bar that has been set that you will not cross in the name of jesus the son of the living god fire burn starting to pieces are you ready now one two three shout jesus upon families upon destinies bring them out every limit placed upon you every embargo placed upon you upon your political career upon your business now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is please bring them out hallelujah please pay attention there are families here that never finish anything you start but it never finishes no matter what whether it's a building project whether it's your spiritual life it does not the finishers anointing is not there the moment you start something must happen on the way and abort that destiny i stretch my hands in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god if there is any family here that is under the yoke of aborting glorious destinies at the count of three i want you to shout that name again that is above all names as you shout that name that yoke must be broken are you ready now one two three shout jesus that altar that yoke in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now the lord is that spirit the bible says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i'm saying it again anyone who is in fraternity with dark powers stopping you from finishing what god said should be finished right now in the name of jesus may the earth open up and swallow them in the name of jesus christ please don't be tired though we are praying you came here listen one genuine encounter 
can bring to end decades of waste of time waste of destiny this is the house of God I want to pray a very serious prayer before we sit down how many of you know that destinies can be exchanged in the spirit that you can be living a life you know this is not my life I'm living another person's script it's in the Bible where kings slew their children so they will live long in the name of Jesus I'm praying now anyone under the sound help them please help them help them anyone under the sound of my voice who is living a script that is someone else's destiny programmed by witchcraft programmed by necromancy powers manipulating your destiny at the count of three I declare in the name of Jesus there must be deliverance for you are you ready to shout again my God and my King anyone here whose destiny has been manipulated spiritually financially by the power that raised Christ from the dead let there be liberty right now one two three shout Jesus liberty restoration liberty restoration liberty restoration Hallelujah. Everything that should not have left your life, either by mistake it left or by manipulations it left your life, and yet it is part of your prophetic preordination. I stand by the voice of prophecy, I call it back to your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I call it back to your destiny. Opportunities, I call them back by prophecy. Relationships, I call them back by prophecy. You'll be seated shortly, but I'm praying. Who is Jane? Jane. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Will be seated shortly. My sister, Victor, shift please. That lady lifting her hands yes tap her for me lift your hands the lord is saying oppression has come to an end over your family take that grace right now i command that spirit to let you go in the name of jesus christ never to return to you i use as a point of contact and i speak to everyone here the days of oppression comes to an end now Who is Jane? I'm hearing a name Jane. I presume there may be many people. Help them please. I want to pray for you. The power of God is going to come on one of you. There's a miracle that God is bringing to your family. Those who are out here, don't rush to go back to your seat. There's a reason why I ask that they bring you out. I will pray for you. But the Lord is asking me to minister to a Jane. And one of you standing here, the power of God is going to come on you very quickly. And you'll be back. I will pray for everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Bible says, It shall be destroyed because of the anointing 
Just help her hold her baby. She can have the baby back after the prayer. Father, anyone under the sound of my voice here that has been oppressed, whose family has come under a demonic siege, ah, I'm seeing like fire resting in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I declare right now that family I set on fire every covenant every ordinance I set on fire right now I set on fire right now I set on fire in the name of Jesus Christ I set on fire I burn every walk of witchcraft every walk of darkness against these families I release you into your prophetic destiny in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I just sense in my spirit before I pray for this once and we sit down I was so touched by the testimony of the woman and her her younger brother the woman with the boy who whose genotype was changed there are many people suffering silently under that demonic thing that appears like a medical condition there are double bases upon which the devil oppresses you in the name of Jesus, we come by the mystery of the blood, the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And we declare these plagues are cancelled forever. 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 Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. Please return to your seats rejoicing. Let's give Jesus praise. There's someone. Just help them will be seated shortly but i'm seeing someone you came here with um your credentials in a brown file bring it come with it jesus the son of god I believe in you. I believe in you. Jesus. The Lord is setting that gentleman free. Age long captivity over his family stopping people from getting jobs and making progress but who shall say a thing and it shall come to pass when the lord has not declared it their, their deliverance is happening many people you see who are suffering it's not that they are bad people there are spirits that are standing the way of people my sister this lady in the name of jesus be delivered the one you are holding i stretch my hands for you and for your family the time has come for your liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. Miracles don't just happen. No. There is a gift called the walking of miracles. Look what is happening to them. Ladies and gentlemen, these are people who were minding their business, sitting and wondering why doors were not opening. What's her name that lady my dear I want to pray for you you believe in miracles help them also they don't fall down just help them there 
there will be such an avalanche of jobs you believe what i'm telling you not just for those who are out here not just for those who are out here i'm speaking by the spirit of god i fear god and i will not tell you what god has not said there will be you will see people come to stand here miracles after miracles the gospel affects the well-being of people not just their spiritual destiny the gospel the true gospel affects the well-being of people i prophesy as i've been commanded and i declare by the spirit of god the grace for increase on that wise let it come upon you supernatural jobs by the power of the holy ghost supernatural jobs for the glory of the name of the lord for the advancement of the gospel in the name of jesus christ it says where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you you would become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations for those of you who have come out here because there was a specific word for you in the name of jesus i don't care whether it's a fresh job or it's promotion in the name of jesus i place grace on you go back with this grace and let it work wonders on your life my friend what do you do huh you are a project engineer with a telecom company. I want to pray for you because what your own is not just a job, there is a very serious increase that God is bringing. <laughs> look at me, my friend. Look at me, just look at me first before you say amen. Understand what I'm saying. This is not just for you, but God wants to use you as a savior for your family. You believe that. You see, in this kingdom, when it comes from God, it does not have a component of self-centeredness in it. When he sends a word to Jacob, his intention is Israel. When he sends resources to Jacob, the intention is Israel. When he sends influence to Jacob, it is the character of men to be self-centered. Once it is me, in this kingdom, selfishness, is sin it's not only bad is sin the character of love the law by which the new believer the new creation in christ lives by is that it gives so this is already a message for someone receiving just for myself my mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. when he sends a word to jacob when he sends a lifting to jacob it is because he intends for it to reach Israel. Hallelujah. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear these voice. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the sun and give him the glory he has done. my friend what's your name this man huh? I want to pray for you where are you from don't be embarrassed don't feel bad i have seen this thing more than 100 times as i minister to people every time the lord opens my eyes and i see this tree and i see written on it a l e k u you know what that is yes i want to pray for you that's what i'm seeing again we are not prophets of doom we are ministers of life once we minister to you it is not informing you about the trouble we are bringing you out the real power of god does not just inform you about what is happening and leaves you there it delivers you it brings you out i stretch my hands and i command that influence and that demonic spirit to let you and all who are connected to you go free now in the name of jesus christ 
may doors be so open for you that it will you will marvel and wonder at the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ help him please in the name of Jesus Christ I apologize we're taking time I hope I'm not wasting your time there is a woman in here this is about four years at least you came here and your one prayer is fruit of the womb who is that I'm seeing someone come in this auditorium not just those outside I can I'll pray prophetically but there is someone here what's your name what's your name what's the name of this one ah huh? Lillian. Lillian come well I, I, I I'm not sure I heard your names come and stand the person I want to pray for you are Lillian who is Jessica what's your name Jessica. you are Lillian two of you are you friends you came separately you believe in the power of God how long have you been married how long have you been married this is the fourth year I want to pray for you you believe you will stand here with your children I believe in miracles the God that does wonders please don't cry father I pray for these precious ones they have stood here trusting believing for many of you you have been prayed for again and again and again and you're standing here wondering I'm sure it will be like before remember what Peter said master we have toiled all night he said but nevertheless at thy word I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God One of you will shout under the anointing loud in front here. When that happens, I just saw the healing power of God moving to you people. Now, you see, sometimes this is a ministry of signs and wonders. So I take out time to explain these things so that when they happen, you don't think this is a display of some superstition. But the Lord does these things many times so that we will fear him. He also does it to strengthen our faith. Now I'm ready to pray. Look what is happening to them. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. If you lift up your eyes to him, you will arise again. He will come and save you. They looked on to him and their faces were lightened i stretch my hands and i declare according to the time of life i release an anointing upon all of you right now i declare by that grace in the name of jesus like eli declared unto anna according to the time of life return with your miracle children according to the time of life return with your miracle children and every power that is back of this tragedy we dislodge it in the name of jesus christ look and leave my brother leave look to jesus christ and leave it's recorded in his word hallelujah it's only that you look the Lord bless you. Please go back to your seats. Return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. This is what happens when you come to church. Please be seated. God bless you. Good evening everyone. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, 
You are my God And I will ever love you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever follow I will seek you in the morning And I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord Tonight what you are about to learn will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 defines in very clear terms the assignment of a true shepherd Jeremiah chapter 3 please give it to us and verse 15 the assignment of a true shepherd I will give you pastors according to my heart and if they are according to my heart, they have the singular assignment to feed you with knowledge and feed you with understanding. That means knowledge and understanding are divine meals. When you are served with this meal of knowledge and of understanding, there is a predictable outcome. You will become something very exact, very intentional. I will give you pastors after my heart acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers these are the requirements for growth and maturity in the spirit submission to doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers so every time we gather I will not fail to let us know that we are here gathered to learn to be mentored to be baptized into an exact body of spiritual truth realize that every time we meet there is a making there is an evolution there is a transition that is happening to us it is not the same version of you who came two weeks ago that is seated now no light is transiting you you will get to a point where you are so full of the light and the power of the holy spirit the results will begin to speak inevitably they will speak hallelujah the lord put a very powerful teaching in my heart and I'm sent to the body of Christ primarily even though Koinonia as a global family is anointed us to minister his word but most of the teachings that I bring are for the body of Christ regardless denomination regardless your the doctrinal differences that seem to divide us it is part of the reason why he brought us to this city and has projected us to the nations as instruments of unity balance dexterity and growth are we together we are lifted and we are strengthened in this kingdom not based on our longevity in the faith no time does not change anything time only reveals a 10 year old error can still destroy like a one-year-old error provided it is error are we together it takes understanding light it says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light so tonight I pray in the name of Jesus Christ world over Azaria family Abuja family here and all who are following from their homes please pay attention if you are distracted when the word of God is coming, be sure it is an attack. It's an attack because it takes focus and concentration to receive. There is an intellectual dimension.
to the reception of the word it's not just a spiritual affair alone your mind has to be active your mind has to be fruitful so even if your spirit is alive and your mind is distracted you see that that's why sometimes before the message comes God quickly settles issues like this because some of those issues are the things that distract people from listening while the word of God is coming someone is thinking how do I battle this issue how do I battle that issue praise the name of the Lord hmm. Psalm 34 and verse 9 the mystery of divine intervention I want to show you a very very powerful Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 let's go to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 the mystery of divine intervention no matter who you are no matter your spiritual level your intellectual level you will get to a point in your life and your destiny listen carefully where there will be a need for a supernatural intervention in your life over the affairs of your destiny remember that what we receive every week here we are handed keys the assignment of keys is not only to open doors but to give you confidence that you cannot be limited the presence of keys suggests that you can no longer be confined and limited you can open the door at will and close the door at will revelations 3 7 and 8 right i'm he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the key of david please go back to verse 7 he of david he that openeth by reason of that key no man can shut and he that shut it and no man can open because of a key that you hold these revelations and these mysteries are keys that grant us grace to command victory the victory of christ and the finished work of christ will remain prophecy and only remain a potential the reality of it is activated on the strength of the light that we know and we understand thoroughly articulated and then empowered by the Spirit of God when you receive that revelation the grace for performance also comes with the revelation you see how it works you're not going to receive a grace for a dimension when the understanding of that dimension is not yet fruitful in your life so the anointing of the Holy Spirit follows revelations the anointing for prosperity follows the revelation of prosperity the anointing for spiritual growth follows the revelation for spiritual growth if you want the anointing you must want the understanding that brings and preserves that anointing are we together Exodus 3 and verse 8 let's get to work very quickly and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the Canaanites the Hittites Amorites Perizzites Hivites and Jebusites I am come down to deliver them divine intervention is one of the mysteries that provides a system of advantage to believers now as you know our dominion in this kingdom is based on the light that we have but also based on the systems of advantage that we access no one is advantaged by default uh -uh. for as long as you are born here on earth doesn't matter if you come from a rich family you may have a financial advantage but that does not necessarily translate into a spiritual advantage are we together now through the revelation of God's Word we begin to incorporate into our lives through the understanding of Scripture systems of advantage favor mercy are we together speed relationships 
the anointing, understanding, wisdom. So that you now begin to introduce these spiritual forces into your life and your destiny. And in no time, you will see that your life begins to reflect the image and the character of the Christ in reality. My little children, he said, of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was speaking to believers, those who were already saved. But he was talking about the formation of Christ. It's one thing to potentially be a recipient of the life of God. But the fullness and the riches of that life is released through understanding. Ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says I have said ye are God and all of you not some are children of the most high the next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge can even though you are saved you may never be able to walk in the fullness of those potentials an heir the bible says as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he's an heir but provided he's a child void of understanding void of spiritual intelligence he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all he's under tutors and governors so it takes light isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life Are we blessed i'm saying all this so that the lord will by this teaching alongside others plant in us a hunger for exact spiritual growth this shadow boxing of trying principles here and there when we are confronted with issues most the average believer please look up listen to me the average believer does not know which key to apply when faced with challenges so as to command victory so the typical believer the typical church goer will begin to engage all kinds of things blood of jesus holy ghost fire communion offering and just shadow box them here and there in hope that one will walk and truly one will walk and the danger is because it did not come by mastery you will fear your result because you are sure that you cannot reproduce it again but Paul said, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he thrives lawfully. There, there has to be a desperation and a passion in your heart. I'm hungry for you, hungry for you. I have come to the table to eat. I'm thirsty for you, thirsty for you. I have come to the waters to drink. Now tarry and not let you go. That's just the part I wanted to sing for you to hear. Like Jacob, Lord change my life. Not through superstition, but through exact exegesis of truth. Let me not move around just saying I am a Christian. No results or results once a year. Not bringing glory to the name of the Lord. No. And then not just succeeding in your spiritual life alone. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in all things. Don't sit down and justify mediocrity because you are doing well spiritually. No. You must embrace the entire counsel of God. There is only one thing that is greater than the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. Are we blessed? Divine intervention. Daniel chapter 3. 
let's study scripture daniel chapter 3 daniel chapter 3 my goodness god is changing someone's life daniel 3 from verse 23 please very quickly daniel 3 23 and these three shadrach meshach abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace follow carefully we are reading to 30 then nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire follow carefully they answered and said unto the king true o king he answered and said lo i see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of god nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said shadrach meshach abednego ye servants of the most high god come forth and they come hither then shadrach meshach and abednego came forth of the midst of the fire uh-huh and the princes watch this governors captains king's counselors being gathered together saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power there are men like that men whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an air out of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed upon them as a result 28 ne king nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the god of shadrach i don't know his name but i know those who represent him i will name him by their victory blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word a king's word can be changed though yes sir oh i vow you will not rise a king's word can be changed and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god 29 look at the victory that this brought to the name of the lord therefore i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego they shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort and the king promoted shadrach Meshach, Abednego, Joshua Selman. Have you forgotten the Bible says this promise is unto you and your children, your children's children, as many as are far off whom the Lord shall call. What is divine intervention? Write very quickly, please. We have a lot to do tonight and we have to rush. Divine intervention is said to occur when God steps in by God here we mean the God of the Bible Almighty El Shaddai when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around divine intervention happens when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord don't forget to add that so when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me through the excellency of his wonder working power upon my life they glorified god in me john 15 verse 8 herein is our father glorified 
when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples there are times in our lives in our families where we will require divine intervention because the help of man we will get to a point where the help of man can fail the bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of men and the frailty of the energy of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh the bible declares no man can prevail are we together why do we need inter divine intervention because satan and his cohorts listen carefully satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of god in the life of the saints the bible lets us know that there is a real devil john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of god over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that god's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance it's helped the body in no small way I teach there that there are three principal channels listen carefully there are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and Satan attack and buffet the saints number one covenants 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 the legal system of the kingdom number two disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at jesus jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know god's intent number two he came as perfect theology correcting our ideas about god number three he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved from his birth there was an attack there needed to be a divine intervention are we together now yes an innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born that was not enough because of jesus they killed his age mates two years and below women cried because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy the moment he announced that he was messiah people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders the political leaders the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an umbrella someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society let barabbas go but let this one be killed satan's determination to kill jesus was so high 
God had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory. Satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny, if allowed, becomes shredded in pieces. Listen, just because you've given your heart to Jesus Christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say, I'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you. No, no. He left Jesus for a season. Came back through Peter. Came back through Judas. On the third day when Jesus was going to arise, they locked up the grave, sealed it, and there were men who were seated. And the Bible says the angel came with power, rolled the stone, and sat on it. Jesus resurrected, he left, and the men came together. They said, look, um, something is wrong. Let's come together. And re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body. That's how determined Satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward. It is not strange and it did not start with you. Satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us. It's, it's a vendetta that predates our coming. It's been an ancient war. Anything that brings glory to the name of Jesus, anything that advances the purposes of God is Satan's business, invited or not. So when they were dedicating you as they lifted you, like Jesus was lifted, it's not only members that came for that child dedication. The devil was also hearing. Let me hear what this priest will say about this. Oh Lord, this child called Joshua Selman, I lift him up before you. Let him be a blessing to the nations. And the devil said, what did you say? I had blessing. Now I'm interested. Not because of what else you said. That means there is something about kingdom come in his life. You become an intentional project. Listen carefully. Oh, why don't they like me? Who did I offend? All that statement is just a superstitious talk. The condition, listen, the qualification for an attack is that you are born. The moment you pass through the womb of a woman, you are qualified enough for an attack. Then, when he sees you giving your life to Jesus, I hope you know demons witness these things. Lord Jesus, I give you everything. And they are watching. And you are rolling on the ground, rolling in the house of God, and saying, my heart is yours, my life and my destiny. They know Satan was once in heaven. He knows the implication of genuine surrender. He knows you are making yourself usable. And he says, do you know what? Let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of God in his life. And can I tell you, provided you are still wearing this mortal body somewhere in the equation of your life you will fall short of obedience somewhere in the equation of your life through ignorance there will be some level of access until you learn what you need to know you will be a victim of the ignorance of it so satan will cash into that moment this is why we need divine intervention it was a system of advantage that was programmed by God's wisdom. So that if by any means, through ignorance, through wrong decisions, it is on the strength of mysteries like this, Paul can say we know that all things, even something that should make you fail, there is still a provision in the economy of God where you can be delivered. Someone shout amen. amen. Yes, sir. So when you say you are a Christian, you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is Jesus. No. You are saying you are one who by the privilege of God's grace, one you have been made a partaker of the life of God, justified. Are we together in Christ? Number two, you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding, you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots. These are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially. These forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life. Let's see what that family will become. They are right, except that when you bring out one mystery, one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox, you can end something that was supposed to be so. One of those mysteries, in addition to the much you have received, is called the mystery of divine intervention. God did not leave us 
without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully there are three levels at which we encounter the power of god number one i need to say this before i begin to explain a few things number one the first level is a personal encounter where we meet god as a person an encounter that is the highest level you receive power from that level god directly number two there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed in principles you don't need to know him you don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power the moment you are compliant to and with the principle for instance you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow is the dimension of God's power that sponsors that growth but it was programmed in principles you don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power this is a dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into business principles they have built systems structures they have built a very civilized society based on those principles even though they may not honor the God that powers that principle are we together so the first is a personal encounter with the God of the Bible. Second is obedience and compliance to principles. Principles work because at the back of them, there is an investment of a dimension of God's power. And then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women. Covenant alignment with men and women who God has trusted with certain graces. Direct encounter with God compliance and obedience to principles then covenant alignment with men and women i just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what i'm about to explain are we together the mystery of divine encounters it is on the strength of these truths you access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory one level and dimension of victory to the other one level of victory and you see by this your life shows in truth that the victory of Christ over sin over death over Satan was absolute and true creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of God's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that Jesus made in and through his finished work. That means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command. My life can be so defeated, it does not look attractive to be a Christian. I can misrepresent the purposes of God so every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression, that men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ, and we are telling the world he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life, they will say we may not be able to see him, but let's look at you who are seeing him, and let's look at what he has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life, it is safe for us to now conclude if this your Jesus is a better alternative to the charm that I've been using. If this your Jesus is a better alternative to this God I'm serving. Nobody lives better for good. Nobody lives best for better. So if we are selling a Jesus to our world and letting them know that he is Savior, he is mighty, the ancient of days, we must be able to present him in a way and manner that dumbfounds principalities and powers. It is on this strength, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, 
to the intent this is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church his bride his body the manifold wisdom of god are we together yes distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us as can now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see Do you know why we teach this? We teach these truths. Number one, because God loves us and he wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of God's kingdom and in this side of eternity. But number two, we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of God's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny. Are we together? Have you seen marketers of products? Look up, please. There are a few people here, some of you may be, you know, company owners, and you have all kinds of products and services, and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company you are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years and look the skill that goes in make sure you're well suited make sure your communication is is very articulate make sure you smile whether you are tired or not look at all that skill we employ the people give them a salary motivate them and send them and even when they see their classmates or their loved ones or their brothers on the street they are not even ashamed. they are so proud of what they are selling and yet the validity is just six months the validity is just two years but we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of men listen carefully it is truly evil to refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results because by doing it you are the the destiny of millions are depending on your results so if you truly love god don't just say i love god you must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men i need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um, there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about Jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of God. Everything together, they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same. We have been marketing Jesus wrongly. That's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face. We need to reinvent our strategy, come up with power, come up with results. Nobody runs away from what works. Are we together? So I need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths. But the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped. And they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge. Oh, I want to serve Jesus. And they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory. I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. 
There is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day. There is no bride who forgets her makeup, forgets her shoe, and just comes to stand, no matter how much you're in a hurry. If you want to present yourself as that bride, get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life. Get serious about every aspect of your destiny. If God tells you, I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus, then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings. Can I tell you this? The arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you. Ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying. But our target is not just the people. We also need the kings because the kings have influence. Look what happened to Zacchaeus. One encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded. Are we blessed? These are principles of kingdom advance. We have a series on that. But for now, it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of God. There are demons, there are arsenals of darkness. Hear me, brothers and sisters. They are going to come and attempt to attack your life. But you need the truth of God's word. The Bible says, write this down. Psalm 11 from verse 9, the B part. Proverbs 11, I meant to say from verse 9. The B part. It says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Submitting to spiritual knowledge. Is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory so divine intervention is real it's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers It's part of the forces that make us matured and help us thrive and reign in life and tonight very quickly I'm going to give us four keys four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual in the life of a family use these keys and you will triumph bringing glory to the name of the lord bringing honor to the name of jesus christ are you ready key number one prayer key number one the first key that makes for divine intervention you want to see the power of God come to change negative circumstances over your life. You want to see the power of God come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that Jesus be revealed and be glorified. The first key is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. Psalms 18. Please give us the first six verses. We'll do a few readings. So please be patient. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Next verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. We're reading to verse 6 and then I'll mention a few verses. We'll just jump to them. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh-huh. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Verse 5. The sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me. Verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears very quickly jump to verse 14 14 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake yea he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them verse 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me go to verse 40 Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. Next verse. We are reading to 50. Please quickly. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Uh-huh. 
it says thou has delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou has made me the head of the hidden a people whom i have not known shall serve me 44 as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me and strangers shall submit themselves unto me we are reading to 50 the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places the lord leave it and blessed be my rock and let the god of my salvation be exalted it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me he delivered me from my enemies yea thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man two more verses therefore i will give thanks unto thee O lord among the heathen and sing praises unto your name verse 50 great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed to david and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress i cried he didn't just come i called him in prayer the ministry of prayer is very very powerful write this down for reference acts chapter 12 please from verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11. this was peter when he was bound kept in prison here's what the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him as a result um herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time and then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the lord in response to prayer came unto him a light shined in the prison he smote peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands uh-huh and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me we we'll read down to 10 let's go to 10 very quickly the bible says when they were past the first and the second word or gate they came to the gate that leaded to the city which opened unto them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him last verse the bible now says and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a shorty that the lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectations of the people god does not just deliver you from men he delivers you from expectations are we together but that happens at the instance of prayer in acts chapter 16 when you read from verse 25 down to 34 the full text we may not read everything the bible talks about paul and silas are we together on account of a lady who they delivered who used divination to bring money for people and now one thing led to the other they were in the prison give it to us please acts chapter 16 from verse 25 here's what the bible says at midnight pay attention Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors financial doors health doors ministry doors business doors doors of your spiritual growth when it is a divine intervention it's not a few doors all doors open all doors open all doors open and everyone's band was loose 27 and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled now followed the result of divine intervention but peter cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here uh-huh 
and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention he fell down before paul and silas and brought them out and said sirs what must i do that is it to be saved that man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring every genuine intervention in the bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to jesus let's finish up he said believe on the lord jesus christ the one who now caused that intervention and thou shalt be saved and it will now affect your household and they spake unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house are you seeing now one divine intervention from the prison now the man is saved and his entire household and he took the same and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meat before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in god with all his house whoever you want to lift lord you can live through me whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whoever you want to save lord you can save through me the salvation of a man and his entire family not just depending on a crusade depending on someone's results but it came through prayer apostle james taught us in chapter 5 and verse 13 he says if any of you are afflicted let him pray the moment you sense that there is an affliction you came back home your children are sick your husband returns back and he says i don't know what is happening in the office You lost money in business. Everything gone. They collected your land, your property. These are events that require divine intervention. Your first port of call is to begin to pray. This is why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not a Pentecostal issue. The Bible says we have a limitation. The limitation is that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit. Ah, he knows, oh, he knows how to make intercession. So I lock myself. While I am praying, my mind may be unfruitful, but there is the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit. Prayer. Praying in the Spirit, but not just praying in the Spirit. Word-based prophetic declarations. I'm showing you how to provoke intervention. You cannot take the Word of God out of the equation word based not superstitious prophetic declarations word based prophetic declarations two scriptures we're still talking on prayer isaiah 43 and verse 26 believers learn this 43 26 isaiah put me in remembrance he says let us plead together he says declare thou that thou mightest be justified my hand is able to save my hand is able to lift but i'm waiting for you to declare hmm. yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with fresh oil my cup runs over you are declaring I have no covenant with death in the name of jesus i declare as for me and my house you are making declarations because you are seeing storms rising you don't keep quiet when storms rise the worst thing to do is to be silent hear me i'm speaking to you because there are people storms all around your life when they woke jesus christ he did not discuss with the storm peace be still 
Hala Suda Parikatuskiata Embreketuskia Hashalabakata. Your spiritual life, suddenly your fire for prayer down, your passion for the word down, favor down, everything down. You should know that you are surrounded. That there is something that is the time to open up your mouth. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and salvation. This is not just a Pentecostal thing, it's a formula for victory. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Oh, I reject death. I reject death in the name of Jesus. Don't feel bad and feel that's how this one said it and died. That's none of your business. You speak. You do your own part and declare over your destiny. I choose life. I set before you life and death. I choose life, I choose health, I choose victory by the Spirit of God. Thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, but none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see the reward of the wicked. I arise and shine because my light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light, their kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I received double. Where I've been deserted so that no man help them please. Passes through me. I become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Prayer. Listen. Please sit down. The moment believers learn this world over. The moment you see an unfavorable situation in your life, you know it is the devil because along with that situation will come the spirit of depression. And the assignment of depression is to keep you silent. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm speaking as a man of God. I know that depression has an assignment to keep you silent. Satan is the master of the flesh realm. So this is how my life will be. I thought this will work. I had a dream and I thought the job will come. And you now keep quiet. And the angels are saying, look at this. There is a law. We are ready to move. God is ready. Help them please. God is ready to move. Psalms 107 verse 2. These are the arsenals of victory. Psalms 107. Please very quickly. Let the redeemed of the Lord, if they are truly the redeemed, don't just think so. Don't just wish so. Say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are you learning now? You return back and there is a medical report that is disturbing. Just when that is happening, your child brings a result. After spending so much on his school fees, you see an evil report. Are we together? The moment that is happening, you just hear that your investment has crashed. You are a politician. They told you, okay, this is supposed to be your position. You are a man of God. You come to church and it looks like everything is going down. That's not the time to be quiet. And that's not the time to attract sympathy. You are the first prophet of your destiny. Go and shut your door. Remove your CEO regalia. Put on that priestly robe. Shake up Arakatosia. Someone blast in the spirit in one minute. I won't be silent in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, believers hear me, hold on, hold on. Do you know that many believers allow tragedy to mount until it presses them down? That's when they resort to God as a last option. And I will not be silent. I will always
place. Listen. An evil report is happening. Your children are going haywire. As the man, you are not just ahead of the home for nothing. Wear your priestly regalia while your children are sleeping. Walk room by room. You are laying hands upon them, not my house. I build the spiritual fortification by prophesying. I decree and declare the foolishness of faith. I engage it. The righteousness of faith speaks on this wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will help you. Come and meet me tomorrow. And you come tomorrow and say, Who asked you to come here? This favor. Just when you are going, your car hit someone. Just when you learn to read the signs. Don't wait for evil to stay. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Hallelujah. You go to bed in the night and you have a funny dream that you know already shows that there is an attack. That the spirit of death is following people in your family. Listen, don't just wake up and write it in a jotter. And, and then when it happens, you say, no, get up and say, no way. In the name of Jesus, I, if he followed my father and my father's father, I come as a priest. I'm a king and a priest. What based declaration? Listen, it was it was God's servant Bishop David Oyedeko who said, No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter inside fire by mistake and say it's confusion. No matter how mad he is when he sees fire, he says he makes his angels winds and his ministers flaming fire. You're sleeping and someone takes your name to a shrine for political reasons. Oh, let this person die or let this person not win. You don't have to go to the shrine right from where you are. Skabakatuskiata. Embreketeskebata. Leko skabaruskiata. Listen. Believers, hear me. This is not just some spiritual jamboree. The times that we live in, it will be risky to not know these truths and to not engage them. Your life literally hangs upon these truths. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Please sit down. Please sit down. Let me challenge you. I want to challenge every family here as much as God grants grace. Provided you and your wife are in agreement, set one day this week, even if it's for 30 minutes, hold your hands. Walk around that house. Identify anything that does not look like Christ. Zoom your tongues to it. Scatter it as if it does not exist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Helakusi abata. No, my womb will not give birth to armed robbers. As a woman, you lay your hands. Or sit down and watch things go bad. Just help those under the anointing. There is a strong anointing in this place. Because this is a message for the body of Christ. Divine intervention comes on the wings of prayer. A prayerless church, no matter what else you have, is a powerless church. A wordless church, no matter what you have, is a powerless church. The ministry of prayer and the word are the foundations of the true church. Listen to me. I'm not creating a doctrine out of this, but let me challenge you. Obtain grace from God to wake up in the night. Conquer slumber. The night time is when kings win. Is when we establish victories. 
you're walking around your house in the night the lord told you you'll be a senator the lord told you you'll be a governor the lord told you you'll be a ceo and there are forces sitting down making decrees you don't need to fight them go to your closet this is how kings reign people of god hear me with every sense of humility that's how we got here i'm not telling you cunningly devised fables everything about your finances is dying scattering you are not lazy you are hard working they are stealing from your shop they are cheating you they are lying counseling is not the solution alone go back and pray there is an evil force wanting to discredit god in my life i attack you in the name of jesus listen i don't promote the devil and i don't mean to market the devil but i have seen many demons i have seen many spirits by the privilege of my calling and the apostolic office i have been exposed to the realm of the spirit i understand scripture i have been well mentored by fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables don't ignore it you will spend your lifetime paying the price we live in an evil world your portion will come to you by insisting from the days of john until now the kingdom suffered violence it is a violent that will take it by force can i tell you this there is no african family that is immune to witchcraft by default it's a lie if not by bloodline by territorial connection when we pray like this we do not negate the finished work of christ we rather stand in partnership our prayer is our participatory role to establish it here and now listen as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of men he didn't say sin i cast you out there are rules of engagement in the spirit as for me i've made up my mind God gave me this mouth not only to eat but to create my destiny and I insist for my life for this ministry silence is not just shouting and jumping around no 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 an intentional approach to your growth take responsibility listen body of Christ thank God for the vessels God has given us but we must become serious and mature to become the first prophets of our destiny go and lock your door pray for me pray for me is good but you must take authority over your situation by the power of the holy ghost the mystery of divine intervention give this message to anyone you know and you love please sit down the first key is prayer for as long as i live i will never stop praying for as long as god has anointed me i will never stop praying for as long as this ministry god grants me the privilege of leading this ministry we will never stop praying for as long as i live i will never ignore the word of god no matter where whatever lifts you is what sustains you don't throw it away don't throw this bible for money don't throw this Bible for awards. Hold it together with the awards. This is it. The alternative to this is charms and witchcraft and all kinds of troubles that come with side effects. I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. Please hear me. The only guarantee to our fulfilling the purposes of God as we await the return of Christ with honor is to get serious with this scripture. Please hear me. 
you are seated here and there is an attack on your spiritual life take it seriously don't just say one day i'll think about it i am telling you now if you have been praying to confirm whether it's an attack i'm answering that prayer by the grace of god it's an attack i hope you still love me this night please pray please pray P pray for me is good but pray in the name of jesus christ and when you are praying i'm not being harsh on you i'm just shouting because of the passion burning in me listen by the grace of god don't be praying and browsing except if the holy ghost speaks to you and you are looking for scriptures quickly keep this thing aside this thing is a blessing but in the name of jesus christ show your dominion over it by keeping it on one side when you are praying you can't be doing too many things and focus lock the door sometimes sincere people can come to distract your prayer and study life how are you are you at home peace be unto this as politely tell them sorry i love you but i'm spending a few minutes if they love you and they love your destiny they should excuse you look live by values otherwise you will crash your spiritual life down you are praying with fasting turn every plate upside down in your house lord there is a spirit attacking my influence there is a spirit attacking my fervency for you it didn't used to be like this what happened to my prayer fire what happened to my word fire i sleep by 7 pm i wake up by 9 am in the morning something is wrong with my spiritual life fight depression speak i reject it ah, i know i lost one billion in this investment my company is in trouble i know that this has happened i know they've diagnosed me with fibroid or cancer or whatever i know that there is a situation things don't seem to be adding up but let me die believing you you return back you study scripture and now the advantage we have there are many people who have gone through the labor of putting the required scripture you need just a little search online and you can find scriptures people have paid the price already if you have an office or a prayer room surround it with powerful scriptures remove pictures of when you were small and keep them aside and put scriptures while you are praying you turn this light firing from one direction please listen to what i'm telling you this is the key to victory do you know why i'm telling you this so that when you rise when they ask you yes you will say it's god's grace but you will tell lies you can't say i don't know what i did jesus i know paul i know you must register your presence in the realm of the spirit i say touch not for me for my children for all that surrounds me touch not do you know prayer can become a habit you are praying and you just stretch for stretching for two minutes and waking up you are not fully awake but the realm of the spirit and demons will suffer just because you are shikaparu skatabadia before you turn back is any man afflicted let him pray can i tell you this i don't mean i don't mean to create controversy or trouble i've come to this city in peace but let me tell you this i made up my mind everybody under my roof must serve my god listen carefully you can't be under my roof at my cost and do what you want to do no no if the owner of the house is praying you should pray don't get up and say whatever no it's a it's a, it's a personal uh, um, revelation i'm not saying it must be so for you so that you don't allow people to bring all kinds of familiar spirits and loiter your house okay this is how we pray in this house you are welcome 5 a.m or 6 a.m with it's a diff if there are special cases that's all right but as much as possible 
the point of neglect is the access point for demons where you neglect the point of neglect many of us started raising our children well but when they became teenagers in a bid to honor them for maturity we started subtracting spiritual values you take away prayer and give your child a car you did not help the child let him pick the prayer before the car key I don't know how I got here please sit down let's let's talk about we have to finish so number one prayer please pray 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 in the spirit pray in the spirit we do not know the evil that confronts us day and night but we can pray it's our zone of safety is the formula that the father gave us pray the moment you detect things around your life that are not lining up with the purposes of God the moment you see that the agenda of God is being interrupted souls are not being saved in and through your life you are a man of God and for two weeks you made an altar call nobody came out don't laugh and say it's all right everybody is saved that's not there is no such thing as that the same way the poor you will always have with you the unsaved you will always have with you the day I spend a week in my life and my life does not save a sinner I will go on a retreat and repent before God what is the anointing for one week Sunday to Sunday nobody came to Jesus through my life ah. nobody got healed through my life no demon was casted out nobody understood the kingdom through my life you must take that responsibility authority comes with responsibility number two very quickly the second key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is praise with understanding praise as an instrument of warfare praise with understanding as a weapon Three scriptures very quickly psalm 67 from verse 5 god is helping us tonight help us media let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee we're reading to verse 7 then let the earth yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us uh-huh it says god shall bless us and all the earth shall fear him at the instance of praise it was a few years ago god gave me i don't like dancing you would have noticed i'm dancing and all of this there's no grace for me there bible says every man should abide in his calling but not when not when i am alone with god you don't dance because you can dance you dance because he's a weapon he praise i learned the power of praise praise works wonders psalm 22 verse 3 psalm 22 verse 3 but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest you make praise your habitation that everywhere there is genuine praise it attracts the attention of god how many of you know that if you want to invite the commissioners in a state you want to invite the permanent secretaries maybe the attorney generals and the rest instead of inviting all those people one by one invite the governor in his capacity as the governor as he's coming the entourage that comes with him somebody who told you yesterday he won't come on hearing that his boss is coming in the capacity the full capacity of his office that's what praise does there are many things you don't know you need breakthrough lifting favor let praise go up let praises rise from the inside from the inside may you Psalms 18 verse 3 where we read earlier said I will call upon the Lord who is worthy or deserving of praise by that formula of prayer 
mixed with praise so shall i be saved that every time i pray it does not just stop at prayer many times when we pray angels come but paul and silas taught us that if we want god directly when you are done praying begin to praise and he comes himself are we blessed have a selection of powerful worship and praise songs every television in your house should have a flash drive behind it with a special selection per season per moment when it looks like you are downcasted oh apostle i can't sing people have sung for you already get their songs and while they are singing you repeat after them the parts you don't know don't worry god understands jump to a part that you know and sing yes sir let me show you something judges judges chapter one from verse two we have to hurry up we're about to pray judges one from verse two look up please they were going to battle and the lord said judah shall go up first that judah judah means praise because i have delivered the land it is praise that will take delivery watch this verse 3 hmm. and judah said to simeon you know what simeon is simeon comes from the hebrew word hear or to hear that's faith that comes by hearing so praise told faith come and escort me i need to receive something it says come with me into my lot that we may fight against the canaanites praise calls faith let me do this with understanding and likewise i will go with you into your land and faith went with praise as a result verse 4 and judah went up and the lord delivered the canaanites and the perizzites into their hands and they slew them in bezek ten thousand of them do not downplay what praise can do perfected praise with understanding write your prayer requests the issues of concern on the ground put a worship song roll before god there get up and begin to dance and dance papa hagin met bishop oyedeko and he said we mentored you on faith and yet god has brought you great increase how did this happen and bishop oyedeko replied him and said by the grace of god sir i danced everyone into this tabernacle that you see when you pray then you praise praise is powerful let it let the praise of god not go away from your mouth sing praises with understanding sing praises with understanding lord i thank you i thank you raise a song when you go back home you wake up in the night and you're walking around and you are carrying the letter they just sacked you present it to god drop it on the ground there dance before him africans we do that a lot those in the west don't see much of that but africans you know what happens during weddings there are this group of people who can wear their uniform and have these talking drums it happens in most cultures especially the yoruba culture they see you and they begin to call your name and praise you you don't want to give them money they call your name and say something about you again <laughs> senator remember the building you did you want to enter the car they remind you you made a statement that you love all of us and they put pressure on your integrity and before you know it you reach down unplanned listen a woman's dance removed the prophet's head as prophetic as he was Herodias danced her way to a decision an option that was given to her and her evil mother told her to remove the head of John the Baptist I can tell you because I've done it myself there are miracles you go and try what I'm telling you and see not showmanship no lock yourself you and your maker cry and roll before him lord i bring before you my political career i bring before you my spiritual life i bring before you this need 
and begin to pray and roll write the name of your business write the issues of concern write the issues that is plaguing your spiritual life what kind of believer am i oh god you said we'll dream dreams i don't have any dreams and if i have a dream it's a demonic dream write it down pray and see what will happen that night praise number three the third key that provokes divine intervention is sacrifice sacrifice very powerful sacrifice seed faith is very powerful seed faith is not just about money pay attention psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me 50 and verse 5 psalm they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me tell you this ask any great man whether in the secular or in the kingdom there are certain heights and certain results you can never command under the sun until sacrifice comes from you when you read psalms 126 from verse 1 to 6 it says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream jump to verse 5 please verse 5 says they that sow in tears there is a kind of seed you don't laugh that's when you are giving isaac if it's ishmael you can laugh but when you are giving isaac you know this is isaac you sow in tears it says you shall reap in joy verse 6 he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing in the sheaves now let me confess and admit to you that i know that the issue of seed has gone through all versions and all kinds of imbalances and abuses here and there i know i know that people have been victims of all kinds of manipulations with the teaching on seed but just because a truth is exaggerated or misused does not mean it is not truth when truth is applied within the boundary of scripture and in truth and righteousness it works wonders you've heard me share my story for many of you who have listened to my teachings I remember a time when God needed to shift me. I was already in ministry and God was already helping me. I remember when God gave me an instruction that one day he was going to speak to me to carry a seed and take it to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeku. I won't tell you the seed. And that morning, God gave me that instruction. I got up, got the available flight and went down. Cut the long story short, when I was done with everything I had to do, as I came out to enter the car, so I'll go and look for somewhere to rest and return the next day. The Holy Spirit told me to place my hand on the ground. There at Canaan land ground, when I placed my hand, he said, son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Not everybody will be honest to tell you the story behind their glory, but please don't be mistaken. Behind every glory you see, there is a story and there is a mystery behind that story sacrifice read the bible about kings who slew their children and an indignation rose against them and war ended sacrifice when done with understanding is powerful i have made sacrifices this ministry has made sacrifices you cannot imagine and i do it with joy and with understanding let me tell you what happens to your seed when you sacrifice first corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 we don't have time but let me see if i can touch a bit on it please understand this mystery so that your sacrifice 
will become profitable. Many give in the body. They just give just because a man of God challenged them to give. Sincerely so. But in this kingdom, results are governed by the understanding that sponsors that action. If you just act without understanding, if you really get a result, it's just the mercy of God. But some will say, how are the dead raised up? So he's talking about resurrection. Please pay attention. And with what body do they come? Paul insulted them. I won't insult you. That which thou sowest is not quickened except it dies. Follow carefully. So there is a relationship now between resurrection and death. Are we together? Next verse, please. Let's save time. Media help us, please. Next verse. But God giveth it a body as it pleased him, and to every seed its own body. Hmm. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, there is another flesh of beasts, and of fishes, and of birds. Uh huh. There is also a celestial body and a terrestrial body. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Uh -huh. Two or three more verses. There is one glory of the sun and another of the moon, the glory of the stars, and one different from another. Pay attention. Their glories are not the same. We'll stop at 43. It said, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It didn't say dead bodies. The dead. You sow it in corruption but it is raised in incorruption last verse it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness and it is raised in power this is a mystery one time i was spending time with the lord and the word of the lord came to me and gave me a mystery behind sacrifice the bible says our seeds have the power to die and have the power to come back to life only jesus demonstrated that the ability to die and come back to life that means it is possible that i can tie any season i do not like to my seed and as i sow that seed if that seed dies everything connected to it must die are you getting the point now i can take the season of disfavor i can take the season of shame and tie it to my seed with understanding and sow that seed when that seed dies that season also dies and the bible says there is a unique expression of the law of seed faith and sacrifice in this sense because when you sow you don't only reap more of what you sow you can change what you want to see still by sowing you can sow favor and reap more favor but you can sow shame and exchange it for honor that means i can take all the unfavorable seasons in my life ministry business career and by faith you drop it and expect that season to die and all of a sudden a new season begins to open as your seed grows it's a powerful mystery you see why it's dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what season someone is trying to kill and if you do not allow that seed die you thought you just stole 10 naira look at gehazi you now see what happened to gehazi he thought he was just collecting money he was collecting leprosy just because the leprosy left Naaman did not mean it left the earth. He was still there, waiting for a volunteer. And a man's greed pushed him. I have ended seasons in my life, ended cycles in my life, ended patterns in my life by the power of sacrifice with understanding. It's a practice that I will continue to do for as long as I live discernment again you've heard my story that i was in joss many years ago and i went to buy sugar cane and i saw two women it was not much old women and i pleaded with them that let me i just wanted to honor them they were mothers i said please let me pay for them they also wanted to buy it 
they were beckoning on me trying to remove their money from their wrappers i said please let me pay for you and then i paid for them and the women began to bless me quite honestly i didn't hear what they said but one of them looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold sacrifice works when it is done with understanding many of us have not risen to a new level because we are not ready those who are unbelievers call them they will tell you they know whether you are born again or not meet great people christians or non-christians they will admit to you that there must be a sacrifice dimension in the equation of your success when you see a man rise beyond the threshold know that there was sacrifice there whether it is a demonic sacrifice or it is a godly sacrifice i assure you no man can rise beyond a threshold just like that look at the father when the father wanted many sons in glory he carried his own son jesus his own son the father did not say i stand as the holy one seated upon an ancient throne be free from sin even when jesus turned to him and said eloi eloi lamak sabachthani father this eternal relationship that has never been severed he said for the sake of the harvest that is coming i want to end the reign and the dominion of sin and not even your face will make me change my mind sacrifice you know why abraham is called the father of all nations we sing and jump abraham's blessings are mine he said if you are abraham you will do the works of abraham abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest imagine a man dragging his son abraham where are you going i'll see you in the evening and the son says father where are we going he says, just follow me obedience is better than sacrifice and he's carrying him home the son says i see the wood i see the fire where is the lamb and he said jehovah jireh do you know what it meant for abraham to lay his son and the child will be saying father what did i do if i sinned against you won't you tell me to say sorry abraham imagine what you would go back and tell the journalists imagine what you would go back and tell the pressmen imagine his marriage was it was obviously going to end what would he tell sarah your 25 year old project all the mockery and the shame because a spirit spoke to you let me tell you what made god to swear a blessing on abraham and god was watching romans chapter 4 there's no time but when you read there it tells you the contemplations of abraham that abraham had planned that when he kills isaac he would beg god to bring him back so that you will take him back to the mother and give him in peace i've obeyed you now please save me from the trouble that is waiting for me at home sacrifice there are times that your seed will have to be the weapon that ends certain yokes in your life there are times not emotional things with understanding lord i'm tired of this level i am tired of this level of grace i'm tired of this level of oil i'm tired of this level of growth i'm tired of this level of hearing you sacrifice he says let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark there is a mark there are people who are recognized both by the realm of the spirit and this realm i've had the privilege and i don't mean to insult your pedigree forgive me if i sound arrogant this call upon my life has exposed me to many successful people i've had the honor and the privilege of praying with many people and every time i meet great people i don't just talk as a man of god i like to listen to their stories what happened and i'm listening sometimes they are laughing i'm not i'm not i'm not interested in all the somewhere in the story there will be a punchline. and then i did this and then god gave me an instruction i did this it may not all be money
there was a time many years ago that God gave me an instruction I prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not see the Sun I didn't know whether it was morning or night I did not check my time don't trivialize 72 hours even if this is what you are doing for 72 hours it is a lot of work 72 hours because we needed to end some seasons and step into certain seasons I was teaching the school of ministry student yesterday we we're discussing the anointing <clears throat> and I was telling them that when you have a little extension wire connected you can hold the extension wire with your hand and even if there is a spark it will not be serious but when you see a high tension cable there are people who held it and remained there till they dried up that's how men can become you can become an extension wire that has little or nothing coming from it or you can become a high tension cable in the spirit the difference sacrifice you don't just look at people and say be healed it's not everything that is a gift there are things that are rewards you will have to stay with the spirit sacrifice of prayer sacrifice of the word the discipline and the constraints i don't want to sound arrogant to begin to tell you the things that i have done for this kingdom but brothers and sisters hear me many of you are in need of interventions there are some of you following online you want to break circles you want to break patterns god is speaking to you not without a sacrifice it is true sacrifice the prophets of Baal remember at Mount Carmel the last card that they used to bring Baal down was sacrifice Elijah said I give you morning till evening do whatever you know to do to invite him they tried everything they started by prayer they danced around remember nothing happened when evening was coming they say there's something we know about the realm of the spirit if Baal would not wake up to our prayer if you will not wake up to our singing give us a knife and the Bible says they started cutting themselves have you seen traditionalists do these things they make incisions because they want to invoke powers they cut themselves like animals and Elijah said your God is sleeping when it was now time Elijah said get out of the way the time for the evening sacrifice that was the time Elijah called God he didn't just stand and say God come mm -mm. he waited till it was the time of the evening sacrifice and he said bring these bullocks for me he sat on an altar put sacrifice there poured water and called upon the God who answers by fire and fire came from heaven licked everything when your life becomes an offering and a sacrifice then you walk in signs and wonders then God will give you a grace and an anointing not just for a church not just for a city but for nations I tell you the truth anybody who loves you sincerely will not lie to you not everything is just free that you pick up on the ground there in Jesus name there are sacrifices that follow certain graces graces and anointings and possibilities are in levels there are graces for regions there are graces for nations there are graces for continents all of them come by sacrifice can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism the last key and then we pray has God blessed us tonight so number one the prayer ministry of the believer two praise three sacrifice four the prophetic the fourth key that provokes divine intervention is the power of prophecy Isaiah 42 and verse 22 please get ready to pray Isaiah 42 and verse 22 and this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none delivereth they are for a spoil and none say yet restore the prophetic was given as a spiritual advantage to help believers rise and ultimately 
advance the purposes of God. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 12, you read from verse 11 down to 13. Hosea chapter 12, 11 to 13. Let's go to verse 12. Very quickly. Jacob fled into the country of Syria. Israel served for a wife and for a wife he kept the sheep. 13. And by a prophet.